talk to us. It's my favorite time of the day. <laughs> that would be early morning. <laughs> Too early for me. To mm -hmm. the morning, which you're putting a log on the fire. Mor morning tea. You then morning tea, morning tea and come back and mm. give it a cushion and give it a newspaper and sits up in bed. Then I get on the phone. Crikey. No, you go and look at Crikey and get on the phone and look at BBC News mm. and That's blah, 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 blah. Sometimes I have it later if he's not here. Mm. 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 It's usually cold by the time she has up. Well, because mm. it's too soon really for me. <laughs> See, while, when I was working, I thought I could... I would request, we didn't have tea till I was ready to have breakfast, I'd have my cup of tea with breakfast. But now that I no longer work, I don't feel I can impose that sort of stricture on him because, mm. you know, it's not really fair, is it? So now I, I have my tea early in the morning, though I don't really want it. It's a problem, you know. <laughs> because he's made it, so I have it, mm. don't I? Mm. Eventually, mm. sort of. Mm. Mm. We met at Tom Hayward's farewell cocktail we, party. No, we re-met the there. Club. No, don't tell me we met at John's 18th birthday because I don't remember you at all. I don't think well, I'm Well, I'm sure we were there at the same time. Well, it doesn't mean if, if we don't remember each other. You came to my first wedding. Oh, that's true. I forgot about that. But I didn't actually meet you. I mean, you no, were obviously no. there and so was I. But I don't know that we were actually introduced. No. I'm pretty sure I didn't say anything to you. I don't think so. No, anyway. I don't think you did. I didn't even notice you. You were otherwise occupied. And um, mm. that, I'd forgotten about that. That's true. Mm. We did meet at his first wedding, which is kind of And quaint, then we reconnected. Really. All the pagans were there, even though. Um, no, I John wasn't, but Nicola and... Well, the, the only one who knew Dave... Oh, no, John didn't really know you either, then you, actually. Then you, then you, it was um, more a case of the fathers sort of saying, you know, being mm -hmm. old friends, I think. That's true. Anyway, that, next, that next was question. in 1982, I suppose, was it, or something? Or three, four. Because then we didn't meet up until mm. 1986. Yep. Mm. And the curious yep. thing is, it, I was the one who actually asked him on the first date, which for me is very unusual. Mm. I never did things like that. The oh. person I've been going to the dead ball with couldn't go, so I don't know. I don't even know why. You didn't tell me that. I thought of you. I want to. I probably didn't tell you at the time. What did was I? That? Can't remember. No, I'm um, right. Anyway, no, certainly not. Anyway, um, so I rang you up and asked you if you want, wanted to come or come down to Sydney. Of course, David would leave at any invitation. Not that I knew that mm. at the time. Anyway, very strange. Was it? I rang her from the phone box and went straight and let's go. Did you? Yeah, just to reconfirm. I don't remember that either. Mm, I'll be there. And then I went and bought, got you a corsage from that shop in Bellevue Hill. Remember that shop, Robert and Sophie? You need to know this detail, do you? Do you mind if I say, say to you, please don't ever do that again. I, you know, don't Did I? waste money on a oh, corsage. That's a bit rude, isn't it? I, I had it in the glove box. My Land Cruiser in those days was really new and clean. It was so quite I had, smart. I had it in the it glove was, box. I actually thought it was the... And I should open the glove box and there's a little something there for you. It was a corsage. So romantic. Mm. Mm. And you were wearing a black dress and we drove all the way to, to Manly to the Pacific Hotel. Manly, that's right, it was. Mm. It was the Pitwaterhouse Deb's Ball. Mm. And it was the night before Mum and John and I flew out to London for Dad's memorial service. I hadn't even packed. It's in Clemens Bay in Australia. When, I, mm. when we got home, we talked for quite a long time and I think I really think I had to go and pack. Oh, I left about four in the tomorrow. morning. And yeah. And then I think you might have... Did you come you for lunch? You should come back for lunch. Did, you, did I say that? Didn't and I, I did. And your mother was having prawns and there was... That's right. Mm. Everybody was trying to get out of the house to get to the airport. Mm. And, mm. and you gave me a card and said, don't open it until you're over Central Australia. And it was a nice little card in there saying, you hope you see me again and blah, blah, blah. And you included a pair of earrings. But they mm. were pierced ears and I didn't have pierced ears. No, I didn't understand. <laughs> but the thought was mm. there, wasn't the it? The thought really? was there. <laughs> <laughs> they, weren't, they weren't very expensive mm. earrings. Just and that's when David, something reminded I said to him, but I, I don't have your address, I don't know who to write, I don't know where to write to you. And he said, just write David Mortmudgie. And so when I came to reply to this note, which wasn't until a week or so later, um, I thought, oh, where, where did he say it was? David Mortmudgie, I wrote. And the postmaster there crossed out Mortmudgie and said, try Mudgy. And in red, in red crayon or something? Yeah, red, no, red biro. And they did that Do you still have that letter? No. Well, it might have been. It's in the archive somewhere. Right, anyway. But I would say so that the was man a wonderful bit of serendipity, no. wasn't it? I mean, that was luck, really. Mm -hmm. You'd heard of Maureen, never heard of Mudgy, and I'd never been to Maureen. Never heard of Mudgy, it didn't stick at all. But the postman in Maureen said, mm. try Mudgy. Mm. You know, yes, indeed. Anyway, sera. that's enough of that. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's been moderately More, successful. <laughs> moderately, yeah, moderately successful. Um, I think, actually, I think partly it's because we were both a bit older when we were married. And we didn't try to change each other. Well, you've tried to change me, but largely unsuccessfully, mm. actually. 
Um, and he was already very well, a great house husband, had already really well trained. Like Jock, he does his washing every yes, day. Yes, but that's you as a role model, so I don't think yes, you've got your role model for Charles. So the, he's, you've always done more housework and more washing than mm. I ever have. Um, yeah, I suppose so. I don't know really. It's a mystery, isn't it? Marriage mm. is a big mystery. Mm. So we share lots of interests, but we're very different. Mm, very. But I've never been convinced by that argument about opposites attracting or complementing each other. Because doesn't it mean you're always fighting about when to go to bed and when to wake up and what to have for dinner and you know what movie to go and see mm. and stuff like that? I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. Mm. It's a mystery, really, isn't it? I always think it's um, it's an impertinence to try and understand or make a judgment on other people's marriages because they're so much more complex and. Mm. You know, you just look on the outside looking in, you can see a certain amount, but you don't see anything, do you, really? So, mm. I don't know. I don't know, really. <laughs> but I must say, Doug, to be honest... A creature of habit. I'm a creature of habit. Yeah, to be honest, <laughs> I'm finding it harder and harder as we, as we age to, to, to be patient, to be more patient oh, and understanding yes, when, me too. when either one of us or both of us are not is deaf. quite as fast as we used to be, or one of us is deaf. That is it's a, all about the communication thing is a real problem. I think, for me, it's a problem. Mm. You don't seem to mind, but I do. Anyway, hmm. So yes, yes. I suppose we've clocked up thirty-five years this year. Which sounds nothing when you hear read of people's oh, obituary they've been well, married for seventy years. Like, well, mum and dad were only married for thirty-eight years, because then, really? well, dad was quite old when he married and died quite mm. young. I suppose mm. so. Yeah. Mm. I can see it sort of getting, it's going to be a challenging right. next 10 or 20 years or whatever we've got left. Well, that's old age that's going to be challenging. Yeah. For you, especially. Old age and marriage. Mm. And well, the growing old thing is, uh, if you've sort of um, got a different approach to it or a different attitude to it or something uh, like that. I think David's a bit like his father. He doesn't really care about being old. Only if he doesn't care if he doesn't get to be very old. Not really uh, interested in looking after his health or or having the best old age that he can have. You'd rather just... I'm not, I'm not going to go running to make me live a bit longer. I don't expect you to go running. No, but no. walking wouldn't be a bad idea. Well, I do. I walk from the bedroom to the kitchen every morning. <laughs> See? I'm back again. See? It's not fair for you to laugh. It's not really funny. <laughs> but this house actually keeps you quite fit because wherever you go, it's quite a long way. Mm -hmm. And we're always forgetting something. You go to the kitchen, you've forgotten whatever, you go back there and get it and you go back to the kitchen. You should wear a pedometer and see how many mm -hmm. steps a day you do. I don't think it'll be that many, really. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah.